As the leaves change color and the weather begins to get colder, provinces are preparing for their fall vaccine campaigns. And there are quite a few vaccines to consider this respiratory illness season, from RSV shots, a new COVID vaccine, and the regular flu shot. Now, last week, Health Canada approved Pfizer's updated vaccine targeting the XBB15 subvariant of the virus. Following the announcement, BC's provincial health officer said the province will be reintroducing mandatory continuous masking in healthcare settings. Meanwhile, Nova Scotia announced today that it's rolling out its vaccines for influenza and COVID-19, joining many other provinces and regions like BC and Quebec this month. Joining us now to walk us through what to expect this respiratory illness season and how to stay protected is Dr. Abhishek Rout, Medical Director at Apple Tree Medical Group. Dr. Rout, welcome to Forum Daily. Thanks so much for having me. So it seems that some provinces are going full speed ahead with their vaccination campaigns. So what is your overall out- outlook for the fall and winter when it comes to respiratory illness season, Dr. Rout? Right. So it's, it's really fantastic to see uh, all of these provinces gearing up for a full vaccine campaign. Uh, really, when it comes to the fall and winter, we're always a bit worried when it comes to respiratory infections. And my outlook's really just cautiously optimistic. Uh, we've come a very long way with our vaccine efforts, and that's definitely given us an edge in controlling the spread of many of these illnesses. But uh, it's important to keep in mind that with the upcoming season, it's likely going to present a lot of challenges as well. Cold weather drives more people indoors, and that potential for new variants always emerge around this time as well. Uh, So we really need to stay more proactive in our approach, uh, and certainly wearing masks in crowded areas and practicing good hand hygiene will be uh, uh, monumental in making sure that this season works out quite well. Now, meanwhile, there seems to be a lot of options, Dr. Rout, when it comes to the vaccines available. So let's go over them one by one. Uh, What do we know so far about this updated COVID-19 vaccine that targets the XBB.1.5 subvariant? Who should get this vaccine and are there any demographics that may not need it? Right. So, I mean, it's it's exciting to see this new updated COVID-19 vaccine specifically targeting XBB.1.5. Uh, it's it's an exciting development to see. It's really an mRNA vaccine similar to other versions, but it's more specifically tailored to address this subvariant. So at the end, the goal is really to enhance the immune response against this particular strain. We know that different strains can cause different changes in the immune system. Some can hide a bit better as well. And so the idea with these updated vaccines is to make sure our immune system can target them a lot better than before. And if we uh, turn to these RSV vaccines now, I know in previous interviews that uh, we highlighted the impact of RSV on children in particular, but we are seeing this virus severely impact older demographics as well. So uh, can you tell us a little bit more about how, how RSV can impact both children and seniors compared to the average adults? That's right. So RSV, or respiratory syncytial virus, uh, it's a big concern for children and seniors. It can lead to a lot of severe respiratory symptoms and and oftentimes hospitalization as well. Uh, We really look at it in terms of children as well, because infants are very vulnerable to RSV. But now we're seeing it for seniors as well, especially those with these underlying health conditions at a much higher risk of complications like pneumonia. So it's not just a pediatric issue. RSV certainly has a significant impact on both ends of the age spectrum there. All right, Dr. Rad, I want to touch on uh, the traditional flu shots as well. So amid all this concern of COVID-19 and RSV, just how big of an issue is the flu this season and who should consider getting the shot? Right. So what we're seeing, especially with flu shots, uh, is it's going to be an issue that's going to be concerning for anyone who's got uh, ongoing health conditions. Uh, If you have an ongoing health condition, you get a cold or you get RSV and you're able to fight that off, likely you might also end up getting the flu at the same time. So the concern here is at-risk groups are now triply affected. We're talking about uh, RSV, we're talking about COVID-19, and we're talking about influenza. So the idea is for those groups who are at risk in particular, we want you to make sure that you are getting those flu shots as well. I know there's a lot of shots now, but definitely the flu shot shouldn't be neglected. All right, Dr. I will on, on that note, what kind of demographics would need to get all three vaccines this season? And if there are uh, demographics like this, how does one go about getting multiple vaccines? Should you space them out? That's an excellent question. So uh, the, the demographics that really need all, all vaccines, we have to keep in mind with herd immunity as well. So the idea is if we have the vaccines, we should all be getting them. That's going to help prevent 
uh, infections to these at-risk groups, and certainly the at-risk groups as well, the older and the younger, should be getting these vaccines when they're available. Uh, the, the general question now is about spacing the shots out, and really it's, it's good to get guidance from your healthcare provider on the optimal timing. We do know that most of the time uh, getting the shots all together is not an issue uh, because we are talking about killed vaccines in general. So overall, I would say it's a good idea to talk to your healthcare provider, make sure you're, you're able to get the vaccines and certainly get them as soon as possible. All right, Dr. Rout, another great interview. Thank you again for your time today. Great, thanks so much for having me.